Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. Another week, another roundup. Welcome to April. I hope everyone's staying safe. I've got some Power BI tips for you. If you're finding us for the first time, be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all the videos from both Patrick and myself. And with that, let's dig in. Alia M at bluegranite.com has got a blog post looking at seven tips to help you be successful with Power BI adoption. And I love these seven tips. These are things that I see working with large enterprise customers. Just, you know, getting that adoption going with inside of an organization is difficult. You've got to have someone that has some influence in the organization that can help you move that along. And that's the first item that she lists out. Another thing she calls out that I love, and I absolutely see this in organizations where it's successful, is having an ability to communicate with everyone. So setting up some sort of like office hours or community inside of your organization, looking at tools like Teams or Yammer, something along that nature and also educating those folks and providing them with the tools that they need to be successful. Great set of tips over at Blue Granite. Check it out, links down below. Marco Russo's got a blog post looking at how to obtain accurate totals using DAX. I hit this myself a few times. It's frustrating. I've seen it with customers where they think they've got the right item, but they really don't when it comes to totals or they don't understand why the totals isn't adding up correctly. And this all comes down to how your DAX measure is created and how that actually works when it comes to visual totals. As always, Marco's got you covered. He's got some great examples in here. If this is something you're struggling with, I highly recommend you check out this blog post. He's just got some good tips and things to think about when you're dealing with totals from a visual perspective. Links as always down in the description below, along with links to all the items in this week's roundup, including some bonus items. You know what to do, go check it out. Chris Webb's got a blog post on how you can analyze a Power BI data sets refresh using a tool like SQL Server Profiler. Now, this blog post is predicated on premium, but I think just, even if you don't have premium, looking at how the tool actually goes after the data from a data set perspective and understanding how those things work, I think is beneficial. Power BI takes advantage of analysis services tabular models and understanding how those tabular models work goes a long way in creating performant reports and data sets inside of Power BI. And I love a point that Chris calls out in the blog post where if you have read any books or blogs on how analysis services does processing of data, then you can apply that to a Power BI data set and how those refreshes work, and then further how to analyze that from SQL Server Profiler or any other tools that are looking at that kind of event tracing. We got the March 2020 summary of updates for the Power BI service, mobile app, gateway, all of those great things. I know the month of March brought a lot of change for folks' lifestyles and just how we're all just hanging out at home, doing social distancing, all of that stuff. But there were some items that came out for Power BI that were worth mentioning. We got general availability for Bring Your Own Key, which uses Azure Key Vault, which is very cool on a premium side. Also general availability of incremental refresh, which brought pro support for incremental refresh, which was amazing. Everyone loved that. We got a new updated Power BI tab with inside of Microsoft Teams. Also the global search just got a revamp inside of the Power BI service. We also got the public preview of the XMLA read write endpoint, which allows us to do so much more with Power BI premium data sets, which is amazing. There were other updates as well, including updates from the on-premises data gateway and some good updates on the mobile app as well. So be sure to check out this blog post, links in the description below to get all of the info of all the updates that came in March. There was a blog post out on the Power BI blog looking at how do public agencies keep communities up to date with everything surrounding COVID-19. And this is probably one of those interesting times where you will hear me say this is a great use of published to web inside of Power BI. This blog highlights what some government agencies are doing inside of Power BI to 
make sure that those states or counties are updated with the latest information. There was a call out for Washington State. There was also a call out for the Victorian Department of Health and Human Services in Australia and what they're doing with Power BI. And there was a bigger update that Microsoft is partnering with USA Facts to get up-to-date data related to COVID-19. And Microsoft is releasing a report that you can go download or they're giving you a published web URL that you can just embed into a website. So whether you need that internally or you wanna help present that externally, Microsoft is making that available to you. There are links in the blog post where you can go download the Power BI desktop file if that's what you wanna do. Or like I said, just take that iframe embed code and go plug that into a website and then take advantage and explore the data surrounding COVID-19. All right, I wanna hand this off to you. What was your favorite item this last week? Maybe it was something I mentioned, maybe it was something I didn't. Let me know down in the comments below, I wanna hear it. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up, smash it if you so desire. If it's your first time here, hit that subscribe button. And as always from both Patrick and myself, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome and we'll see you in the next video.